Hey guys, Chris Murphy here. I've got the amazing Chris Plowman here today. Hey Chris. Hey Chris. So Chris is going to be talking about investing today. Uh, he has his own company called Purposeful Investing. Uh, runs an awesome course. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about the importance of investing in these times. We're going to be talking about commodities like gold and silver. Uh, most importantly, about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, for those of you who don't know much about it and the great benefits it has and how you can get excited about it and, and learn about it here. So before we start, um, yeah, Chris, Chris has helped me a lot in the last year, you know, in terms of the amount of money I've made from investing. Um, I'm happy to say it's improved a lot. Things like Bitcoin have been great. Um, and Chris has given me a lot of wisdom. So Chris was... Um, so always sort of is the co-founder of Floatworks and shareholder now created awesome flotation centers in London great community great place to work so today yeah Chris let's get started so why are people best investing their money rather than just keeping their money in the bank particularly in these times thanks for that lovely intro yeah so look, investing's always been important uh, which I'll go into the reasons for that um, as you implied, it has never been more important than right now. <clears throat> and the reason, the main reason for that is the thing that most people do is keep their savings in the bank. And yeah, I think that's a bit of a, a, that's a narrative that people are fed from uh, when they're young, from their parents about safety and security, which obviously has its place. The issue with that is that the money you hold in the bank now, you earn 0% on. There was a time when you used to get about 5% interest by holding your cash in the bank. Those times are long gone um, because of actions by governments and central banks, which I'm sure is a topic for another day. Um, so most people have their savings in the bank and they, they don't earn any money off of that. What most people don't understand or see is inflation. Um, of course, I think we all understand at a basic level that the things that we buy and consume in our lives have been going up, maybe since we were children. But we don't really, or most of us don't, calculate or, or understand the actual impact that that is having on our wealth and our, and our purchasing power. Um, but if you um, if you'd put your money in the bank 30 years ago, let's say you put a hundred pounds in, in, in the bank and you go to it today, there'll still be a hundred pounds in the bank, but what would have cost you a hundred pounds to buy before now is going to cost you something like 500 pounds. Uh, obviously, these are very rough calculations. Um, and that, that um, reduction in your purchasing power or reduction of your real wealth is happening every day. Mm -hmm. You just don't see it because it happens in such inc small increments. Uh, it's like uh, we've got a puppy at the moment, or my brother's got a puppy at the moment, and... Um, uh, and he lives in a different house. And every time we see him after a week, we notice that he's grown. But Jack, who has him, doesn't notice that he's growing because he sees him every day. It's basically the same in reverse. Um, so what's happening to most people is their wealth is decreasing by the day. And especially if you hold your cash in the bank for a few years, 10 years, 30 years, a lot of people do this their entire lives and save for when they retire through their pension uh, and a lot of people actually when they get to that sort of age they realize they're a lot worse off than they thought they were going to be all of the things that they thought they were going to be able to do they're not able to do and essentially they're uh, poor and some people are very broke when they retire and this is the biggest contributing factor to the wealth divide um, there's a lot of stories and conspiracies about the wealth divide and some are true and some are not true. But the biggest reason for it is that the wealthy, the top 1%, maybe the top 10% in some capacity, they know how to invest. So they take their cash 
and they put it into assets. Um, they're either assets that generate cash flow, so they might invest in companies that pay dividends or properties that pay them rental income. Um, but more so, they invest in assets that inflate in value. So they, they buy companies or they buy shares and stocks in companies. They buy uh, assets like gold and silver or arts. Uh, and they buy other financial instruments and like, like you talked about the one that is on everyone's lips at the moment is bitcoin and what happens with assets when we uh, see inflation is that they inflate in value and a lot of these assets actually uh, inflate uh, tremendously in value uh, when we see inflation so uh, this is one of the main reasons why bitcoin is going up at the moment is because we have so much inflation. Why do we have more inflation now? That's because central banks like the Bank of England, but also Federal Reserve, Bank of Japan, European Central Bank, they're all printing slash creating new money out of thin air. A lot of people are getting grants, furloughs, subsidies, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and Generally, people think that this money, the government has this money and they give it to us. It's not true. The government doesn't have any money. The government doesn't have a bank account. The only money that the government has is either what they take from you in tax. So any, all of these things that need to be paid for, are, you're either going to be taxed for it now or in the future, or they create it out of thin air. When they create it out of thin air, they create inflation um and your purchasing power decreases and the wealth of the people who who hold assets increases and um, what investing is all about is starting to shift your uh strategy so that you stop uh treating your cash and investments like most people because they don't have the knowledge and you start to do it like the top one percent and how do you do that you buy assets Great start, Chris. Yeah, lots, lots in that. <laughs> then, and like I said, I think a lot of people are, you know, they're, they're getting maybe furlough payments and then just staying at home, riding this out and thinking things are going to go back to normal. Um, and I think for me, it did just hit at one point where I was thinking, you know, what's going on? And then you question as well, don't you? Why are the rich getting richer? You look at the top five billionaires and they've all gone up like 50 billion or something. And then all the people at the sort of the lower class, the 99% middle class people as well are, are, are losing money um, or if they're not losing money they've got the same money and then money you like you're saying is money's getting getting less and i think the the thing is not to get perhaps too frustrated and yet yeah, people are getting angry aren't they like jeff bezos getting more and more money and but i think where we're coming from a, a point of personal responsibility is okay how what can we learn now how can we learn to be like that and like you're saying is to to use what to look what they're doing and it's something that we've not been taught isn't it it's not we've not been taught in in school um and i was talking to you even the other day about even politicians don't really understand how the economy works and, and what's going on so it's just to, to clarify on this as well i thought it was interesting so the bank of england because a lot of my friends were saying oh yeah the government owns the bank of england but that's not true is it isn't it the bank of england central banks around the world are, are private companies mm. that's what People don't understand. Um, so they're private for profit companies and their shareholders are essentially all the big banks around the world, uh, especially uh, the uh, families who founded these banks in sort of the 1800s and early 1900s. Um, so they don't necessarily, as, you've, as we've probably seen in the past, have. The best interests of the population at heart. Mm. Um, their their interest is to maximise their profits, and one of the ways they do that is to the government uses the central banks to get money because central banks create the money. Uh, the central banks are incentivized to support that process and create as much money as they possibly can. 
um, what we just talked about before this is how that is actually damaging. Um, mm. the, the politicians will try and um, play it off as being beneficial to the people. Mm. So for example, we're supporting you with this furlough payment. And of course, in the short term, if you can't pay your rent, then there is some benefit, of mm. course. Um, but like I said at the beginning, nothing is free. And mm. it, all, it all needs to be paid for. So whatever you're, whatever you're getting now up front, you're just, uh, is going to be taken away from you over the course of your life and more. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, so yeah, Chris, obviously lots, lots to talk about. I thought what would be really interesting as well is some going through just some common myths with, with people in terms of particularly with the stock market, with companies. What I liked about your course is you, you pretty much getting people to align with their values and invest in what, what they believe in, what, what they believe will bring value long term. So what people are doing a lot of is maybe they invest in Amazon or whatever, and then Amazon goes up and then they sell people don't stay in for the long long term and you were saying things like with tesla for example if you if you invested years ago if you invested in bitcoin when it was like one dollar of bitcoin and you kept it till now you would have so much money so so what what is the secrets of that because i remember you saying like look if you just invest your money each month and and don't take it out <laughs> you will be a bill you know you'll be a, not a billionaire you'll be a millionaire in like 30 years right so so what what are the reasons why people can't do that and the benefits of keeping it in long term well the reason why people can't do that is a they get impatient mm. and b they don't quite understand uh one of the key principles of investing which is compounding returns and it was einstein that said compounding return to the eighth wonder of the world um and you know what that means is the longer that you stay invested that you keep your money working for you the more you make in fact your returns become exponential because every year let's say you're making 10 percent, you're making 10 percent on your total uh investment amount so that will may start small but as you continue to invest and you make 10 percent a year every year that 10 percent returns is becoming bigger and bigger and keeps being mm. added to the pot and that reaches a stage where you've got a big investment portfolio then you make 10 percent on that and now you're mm. talking about real money and um and it, it, all of this is just mathematics it's not my mm. opinion. um if you just follow a simple investing strategy for 20 30 years and invest regularly and don't take it out then you'll become a very wealthy person you know you will be a millionaire it's been proven throughout history and um, even a lot of people who start investing don't really have this perspective because mm. uh, they don't have the knowledge so it's great that they start and they may make a bit of money but also they will miss out on the massive returns mm. because the massive returns really do come uh, when you uh, let your money do its job and it needs a bit of time to do that. Yeah, 100%. I think the, the big lesson I learned, I mean, when you said that and you showed that, it somewhat just clicked. I think like Einstein said, you know, when it clicks, it's like, oh my God. And I think it's, it's to do with everything in life. If you're doing a workout or you're doing yoga every day, you see the comp, you know, you do it every day for a year and you see all these amazing benefits. But most people don't, they, they can't stick at one thing, you know, mean you know maybe to do stuff like technology at the moment too many distractions too many options too many being sold too many things but the i think the interesting thing with that and a lot of people can't get their head around this so for example if you you know you bought a bitcoin when it was one dollar um then you look at it now and and if you was to cash out and then you you, you know you cash out at thirty thousand. And then it goes up to 40,000 you think, oh, I'll invest again then. But you're not getting the, the returns you were as, as one. So I realized that with Bitcoin when it, when it was like 7,000 pound last year and I put like 500 in, that 500 is times by like four or five times now. So it's to get your head around it and to, yeah, 
And, and once you start to get it, and if, even if you think just put it in every month, you was even saying you don't even need to look at it, right? So, so that's interesting. And then if you took something like gold, for example, so I thought it'd be interesting to talk about gold and silver and, and probably just the illusion of, of what money really is um, and a quick summary of the history of money because people will see a 10 pound note and think, oh, this is, this is money. But then when you find out it's actually backed by gold at one point, people used to use gold as, and, and gold has always stood the test of time as, as you know, proper currency. Um, so yeah, maybe to quickly talk about gold and silver and what's the importance of that and why it's important to, to invest at least some of your money in that. Well, all money is a belief system. Mm. So, you know, the coins that you have, the, the paper notes that you have, all the, all the numbers in your bank account, it only is worth something because you believe it's going to be worth something tomorrow. And because if you try and give it to somebody, they will give you some goods or services to that value. And currencies have come and gone over the course of human history, and they will continue to do so. Every fiat currency, fiat means not backed by anything, so pounds, euros, dollars that we have today are not backed by anything. All fiat currencies that have ever existed have uh, have disappeared into oblivion and that will happen to all fiat currencies that currently exist even pound, the pounds and dollars and euros that we are all accustomed to um, the reason for that which we've already touched on is because governments and central banks get out of hand and start creating loads of them and they become worthless at some point we don't know exactly when that's going to be um, and they're able to do that because it's no longer backed by uh, anything real. So mm. the pound used to be backed by gold. Um, and um, when governments decide that they want more of them, but they don't have the gold to back them up, then that's when they left the gold standard and just decided mm. to do their own thing. These cycles repeat for our history and they will continue to repeat. Um, we may be living through a very historical time. It mm. certainly feels like it, where um, uh, fiat currencies around the world are really stretching their, uh, their, their feasibility um, because of because of what's happening with the current climate. We will wait and see what happens. Um, the, the, so, but gold and silver in particular has been used as money really since the beginning for a long, long time, many, many thousands of years, if not tens of thousands of years. Mm. Um, and the reason why they work so well as money is because they're real, they're tangible. Uh, people want to use silver for industrial use, they want to use gold for jewellery, um, and they're scarce. Um, so they actually are worth something, really worth something, because it's a, it's a scarce commodity. Um, and people have always gone back to gold and silver during times of uncertainty and times of inflation, because... Once people start to, re it's starting to happen now, but we're definitely not at a tipping point. But once the common man or woman starts to realize what we've been talking about, which is that the pounds in their bank account or under their bed are becoming worthless, mm. because that will happen, then they obviously don't want to hold them anymore. Because if you, uh, if you know as we're doing now, but that if you know that your pound is potentially going to be worth 80p tomorrow and then 60p the day after, you're incentivized to get rid of that as soon as possible. And what are you going to buy with it? Obviously, you stock up on your essentials and the things that you're going to need in your life. But after that, when people are looking to protect their wealth, looking for a store of value, looking to protect their purchasing power, then historically they flock to 
gold and silver and perhaps other commodities mm-hmm. like diamonds and art and stuff like that but gold and silver has really been the home base for that protection store of value um and that is why gold has made a 10 percent return historically since the beginning of recorded history in terms of its value mm. silver has made a 12 percent return historically um and that's because essentially gold and silver are holding their value because they're going up 10 or 12 percent mm. in relation to fiat currency so what's actually happening is gold and silver stay the same mm. and your pounds are decreasing by 10 percent every year mm. That's something that people find really hard initially to get their head around. But once they realize what's happening, yeah. they will never keep money in fiat currency ever again if they don't need to. So if they don't need it for spending or emergency funds, because they know it's going down 10% a year. So at the very least, you buy gold. And then you just have the gold sitting there instead of your currency. And then you know it's holding its value. Mm. And if you want to make a return over and above that, then you will look at things like equities, like Amazon, Tesla, as you talked about, mm. and um, potentially digital gold, which is Bitcoin, which is making a bigger return at the moment because it's such a new and exciting technology. But it really is its use case half of its use case is a store of value so mm. digital gold um the other one is a medium of exchange because you can send it very easily to your friends and family yeah amazing stuff there chris with uh with all of what you've mentioned um so yeah i think we will come on to bitcoin shortly but like i think you said as well it's it's interesting how a lot of people's mindset is still they would still rather have most of their money in the bank but from from what you're saying something like gold you know you've got 10 bought 10 pounds worth of gold like 40 years ago <laughs> 10 pounds in the bank is still 10 pounds but gold would have shot up and, and a big myth as well most people always think gold's hit its peak haven't they you know and i speak to people and they go yeah gold's already gone a bit up since 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 march and um and then it's just it's one of those things um, i mean there's lots of stuff we could get into i mean i know for you guys watching now you won't get a chance but um, i'll probably leave a link to one of Chris's webinars that he did, so you can watch us talk, watch him talk a lot more about this in d- detail. But I thought it'd be good to get onto cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, um, and more so, I think maybe a good thing place to start, Chris, to talk about what Bitcoin exactly is without getting too much into the geeky uh, computing element, because I think that's what throws a lot of people, you know. And maybe trying to understand it, you're sort of like, I've got not point not 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 one two Bitcoin. And then people are just like, I can't even know what that means in, in money. So with a lot of what we talked about, Chris, I guess we could start from there in terms of a lot of the problems in the world from, from the inflation, from, from governments and all of this. So, so where does Bitcoin come in, like in terms of investing in something that you're passionate about? Uh, so wh- where does Bitcoin come in um, and, and why should everyone get some Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin was originated in 2009 after the financial crisis. Mm. And it was created in response to the actions of governments and central banks and the fact that they just create an infinite amount of money out of nowhere, which has a devastating impact on the population. And um, Bitcoin aims to do the opposite of that. And the, the main there's two main ways it, 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 it improves on the current system. Essentially, Bitcoin is digital money or digital gold. Um, and it aims to improve on what we already have, or it certainly does improve on what we already have in two ways. Number one, it's a better store of value. We've already talked in length about how cash is an awful store of value and gold is a really good store of value. Um, Bitcoin, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin that ever exist. Currently, it's about 18 to 19 million. There'll be 2 million more created and then that's it. Um, And that means it's a finite resource. It's scarce. There are very few um, assets in the world that are scarce. 
everything is abundant nowadays, particularly money. And even other financial assets like stocks and bonds, they create them out of nowhere. Um, there will only ever be 21 million. So when you only have 21 million and you have, that's the supply, and then you have more and more demands, and there is more and more demands, lots of different people, retail investors now want to buy Bitcoin, institutions want to buy Bitcoin, governments will be coming soon to buy Bitcoin. So demand is going up and supply is stable. So the only thing, the only thing that can happen to satisfy that equation is the price goes up. Um, that's just the law of supply and demand and economics. Um, it's like if there's only uh, uh, if there's only a couple of collectible cars and you really want one, then you're gonna have to pay a high amount because it's scarce. Mm. And for the first time, we have a scarce financial asset. Gold is scarce, but at the same time, we also don't know how much of it is in the ground. So gold is amazing, but Bitcoin is better in terms of known quantity, known supply. That's how it becomes a great store of demand because the price has to keep going up in mm. relation to the fiat currency that exists in the world. The more inflation we see, the more money there is sloshing around in the world. And there's, I know a lot of people are struggling, but in total, there's never been more money around. Mm. And that money has to go somewhere. And people don't, especially people who know what they're doing, they're not holding that in cash. It starts mm. to flow into financial assets. And there's one financial asset that is going to be uh, or is completely scarce, and that's Bitcoin. So, way more demand, stable supply equals higher prices. And that's not going to stop for the foreseeable future. Um, and then it also improves on the current financial system as a medium of exchange. Right now, if I want to pay somebody something or buy something, mm. I have to go through a number of different third parties to do so. I have to have a bank hold my cash. I have to use Visa or MasterCard or Stripe. Uh, there are a number of third party processes and custodians that we don't even see. Mm. They're all taking a chunk out of the transaction that we don't see, like 0.1%. So we're losing money there as well. It's all built into the transaction. Um, and we have to trust all of these people or entities. And I don't know about you, but I find it hard to trust the banks and the big financial institutions. Mm. Um, and we're locked into that system, or at least we have been until now. Uh, because now with crypto, Bitcoin being the daddy of crypto, um i can send you bitcoin mm. directly very easily and you can be anywhere in the world and you will receive it in in less than a minute uh and so that's obviously great just to get out of the financial system mm. um it's also it requires no trust the reason for that is because the Bitcoin ledger where all the transactions happen is completely transparent, mm. uh, decentralized. There's no reliance on third parties. It's all done by the computer network. So I don't have to trust you because it's all systems and processes mm. and code. Um, and it's also fantastic for uh, global international connection and transfers if i wanted to send money right now to somebody in venezuela because they're really struggling with hyperinflation mm. by the time i've managed to find a way to get my pounds to that person a there'll be not much bit left and b it may be practically impossible anyway mm. i could send them a hundred pound in bitcoin right now and it would be received and then they could use it yeah no that's that's a great it's amazing to to think of that but then the governments will come in and say like you know because it's 
I guess with stuff like that, their, their job becomes pointless. Right. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, it's completely decentralized as we sort of said, you know, the sort of the, the owner was anonymous um, and is like now it's completely disappeared and it runs by itself. It means so, it has been manipulated, which is really important. Yeah, exactly. And people think, well, this could happen. It could be caught, it could be banned. And, and those, the likelihood of that is, is low. Um, but yeah, Chris, I guess, um, cause limited for time and stuff, but I think what would probably get people's interest even more right now is, um, just talking numbers. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when I first invested in Bitcoin, <clears throat> It was seven thousand pounds. It's now. I mean, it's dropped a bit today, but it you know it was like thirty thousand pounds the other day, forty thousand um, dollars. I was first told about Bitcoin two thousand thirteen. This guy, this client I had actually, I was like coaching, and he kept wanting to pay me in Bitcoin. I was like, no, just pay me in pounds. You know, he gave me twenty pounds in Bitcoin, and then I think by two thousand seventeen, it was worth like seven hundred, eight hundred pounds. So that's the idea of of how high this can go. Um, so. Yeah, people now, sometimes people, again, like with gold, they're like, I spoke to a guy and people have sold it, Chris, as well. Can you believe that? I, I can't believe it. People sold it 20,000, 25, and it's, they keep thinking it's, it's hit. And then the media are saying, oh, it's gone as high as it can go. And I'm sure you'll agree not to believe anything in the mainstream media. Uh, so, yeah. So, so what sort of number do you think it can get to? And people can still invest now. And, and how can they get started as well? No, it's very common to look at it and go it's not going to go up anymore Mm. because it's all time high gold is actually a really good example great analogy um gold will always go up over the course of history because of the things that we're we're talking about um the same is true with bitcoin all you have to do is zoom out and you'll see which way it's going of course there'll be ups and downs along the way um Uh, Without getting into too much detail, um, Bitcoin also tends to follow a four-year cycle. Um, That is around the halving, which happens every four years, which means Mm. the number of new Bitcoin cuts in half. We won't go into the detail, but go and read about it if that interests you. Uh, So the price tends to move around that four-year cycle. And the, the last year of that cycle, happened in 2013, 2017, and 2021, which we've just begun. And what happens during the final year of that cycle is a massive, massive, massive increase in price. And that's why the people that are selling now are wrong, and they're going to regret their decision because they think that $40,000 is high, but $40,000 is not high compared to three hundred thousand dollars which is what i predict it will be in september um it will i it's a prediction it's based on analysis um it obviously won't be exactly right but i can tell you with 99.9 percent certainty that we're going a lot higher than we are today Um, But it's going to happen very quickly. Mm. So the people that are selling now, I feel sorry for. The people that that are looking at it. Maybe some people watching. I know know some of my friends watching have have sold. Yeah. And what they're going to do is they're going to buy back in at $100,000. Mm. Because then they're going to see the news stories about Bitcoin going to a million. Mm. And they're not going to want to miss out. they're probably going to repeat that cycle a number of times and miss most of the gains. And they may even end up losing money because it is a losing strategy over the long term. Buy and hold is the best approach. There's a slight, uh, uh, there's an interesting dynamic with Bitcoin with the four year cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, so, still, certainly buy and hold in relation to people that are selling today. Um, but I am looking at a peak around September of around three hundred thousand dollars, two hundred ninety-six thousand dollars to be precise. I would love it if I got it exactly right. That would be so cool. Um, and pr- around September, and then we'll see a big correction, like we did in two thousand thirteen. 
it's still a very winning strategy to hold throughout that whole process. And you will mm. wake up in 2025 and you'll be a, probably a multimillionaire, depending on how much you invested. Um, and I, what I'm trying to do, and um, certainly follow my Instagram to uh, learn more and follow this journey because I'm trying to hold everybody's hand throughout mm. this journey is to make sure that we take a good amount of profits around the top near September. We won't get it exactly right. We won't get the exact top. It's impossible. But definitely making sure that we realize some of our gains. Um, and then uh, we'll be looking to buy back in after the most likely crash that is to come after that based on previous four year cycles amazing stuff chris um yeah and, and you always say to everyone even when i ask you stuff you know do your own research um as as, as strong as you can see chris is like this is definitely going to happen and you can feel it and and from what i've seen so far it has it has all been going that that way um but yeah do your own research look into it a bit more and Chris always says as well to do, you know, to invest in what you're passionate about. So from what Chris has been saying about Bitcoin, if you're like me and you think, you know, there are some real problems in the world, a lot of what's happening at the moment, this is how you can, can help create, you know, a better world. You know, if you invest in just the stuff you believe in, you know, if you really believe in, for example, like with Floatworks, um, uh, where me and Chris are, um, you know, if you really believe in that, um then you know at least you're invested you're involved in it you know you're invested in things which you believe are going to bring about a better future and that's where bitcoin can can be a better proactive approach and, and to get out of the obviously i come under this category of you know you blame the government you look into the conspiracy theories and all this stuff but it's like what is the you know how can you take responsibility how can you look after yourself um and it can sometimes be crisp people say like i don't want to be like the one percent i don't you know um i don't want to play their game but the game you know the system is that's the system we're in um and obviously with bitcoin is kind of towards a, a better system as well isn't it yeah i mean look when people say that i understand what they're saying but they're talking about morals and ethics mm. rather than actions in terms of investing you know if you're a good person you want to do good things in the world mm. um, if you become wealthy then you have all of the options and opportunities available to you you can give away all of that money straight away to charitable causes if you choose to none of this means that you have to start acting differently and that is actually one of the beauties of bitcoin it could be because it's also a vote against the current system um you know we talked about voting with your wallet in terms of mm. not going to supermarkets and going to farm shops etc um which is amazing uh this is a very powerful way of voting with your wallet perhaps the most powerful thing that you can do with your mm. your cash yeah 100 percent. i mean there's freedom already people will say like oh when, when the world goes you know back to this or everyone's using bitcoin but i think what i found chris so as long as for example use that example of paying someone in another country as long as you're using bitcoin i was even thinking of using bitcoin for my meetup events and stuff like that then you then start to create that change and once you're doing that rather than complaining you're actually taking a lot away so i guess to summarize chris because what what was interesting as well is when people say i don't want to play their game it comes down to mindset and people have beliefs like money's the root of all evil and then you know these greedy bankers and you know this this is all true a lot of these beliefs but at the same time money is is energy is is just what we use to exchange value and all these it's all to do with your self-worth and all these other things so if people watching this now i recommend that you check out chris's course he, he said it's free on his um on his website um currently you can sort of go through it which which will be amazing but i guess for people here chris now like I, they just want to get started um maybe quickly give them a couple of tips i know you recommend using trading 212 and uh for for the stocks and maybe buying the gold shares and stuff like that of course you can buy physical gold as well and, and silver 
which can be a bit of a pain to carry around, but it's good to own it. And also cryptocurrency, you recommend using Coinbase. Um, and, and I think if, even if people just bought a bit of cryptocurrency today or bought a share in something, at least that's better than nothing if they don't have anything at the moment to get them started. Yeah, the, the, the 30 second starter guide is number one, go on my Instagram and watch my highlights because I've done loads of stories on crypto. I'll set you up at a very high level for what you need to on crypto. And in the links, the referral links to Binance and Coinbase, you both, you get something free. I get something free if you use them and go in and buy something because you get very invested emotionally once you've bought something and that will encourage you to continue doing more research. And there's also the link for trading to want to do in there, which is where you want to buy your shares, equities, companies. Um, and again, go in and buy something meaningful to you. Let's say Tesla and you don't need to invest a lot. You can invest 10 pounds in Tesla. Now, once you've done that, you own a bit of Bitcoin, you own a bit of Tesla. That means you're a company owner and you voted against the financial system. Now you're hopefully going to be very interested in expanding your investing knowledge. Amazing stuff, Chris. I guess the final question I had was on, yeah, you know, obviously some of the, the way it's sort of going, people fear it might end up like China where you're sort of tracked and you're spending and all that. So with Bitcoin, is, is it no way you can sort of, you know, governments can use that to track your, your, what you're doing and what you're spending your money on and stuff like that. Is that, is that another way of beating the system? Well, what they are going to implement, which is central bank digital currencies, that means your pounds or dollars will be digital. That's exactly what's going to be happening. They'll be able to see every single thing that you're doing and will be able to approve or reject every single action and be able to tax you however much they want. So that's coming regardless. So I, if you're worried about this stuff, I would start to think about ways to escape that system. Crypto is one way to escape it. Bitcoin in particular is pseudo anonymous. That means that all transactions are transparent on the blockchain. But actually to get into the detail about who sent what amount to who for what, that isn't there. It's just what wallet is sending to what wallet. Um, potentially in the future, it, governments could try and regulate and make that fully transparent maybe to align with central bank digital currencies we have to uh, continue to monitor that um, as we progress other cryptocurrencies are their use cases to be completely private because they recognize the transparent ledger with bitcoin is one of its main uh, benefits because it means that that's, there's no trust required, like I talked about before. Me and you say we're doing a transaction. It can be verified by anybody very easily. That means it's very efficient. But there are some crypto people who would say, yeah, but crypto is supposed to be fully private. That is about completely escaping and having complete uh, personal sovereignty and privacy if that's what you care about there are privacy coins and um, the biggest one is monero um mm. so if you really really care about that i would research monero and think about buying monero yeah no that's good to know and it's, i think that's just the way as we don't know what's around the corner but it seems like there's always something good to focus on um, like a lot of people are scared at the moment about like whatsapp and facebook but now there's like other alternative platforms. There's Signal, there's Telegram, and then there's other sort of versions of Facebook coming out and other search engines and other YouTubes. And so, so it's just interesting to see how, how things just change. And we, we just don't know what's around the corner. But for now, as we've sort of pointed out today, it's, we need to be more aware of what's actually going on, what's actually happening with the economy. I don't think the government will tell you everything. Um, so <laughs> or definitely not so, that's that's my doorbell but um 
I think that's about time to wrap up then. <laughs> All right, Chris. Well, um, yeah, it's been great. And yeah, we'll, we'll send the link. We'll put the link at the end and stuff like that. And unless you've got a final, final message for anyone. Follow me on Instagram. Send me a message if you want to talk about anything. Cool, Chris. All right. I will catch you soon. Thank you.